this, this leg has been really good. Uh, we're out right now with Zach Sabbath and King, two great bands. Um, very inspiring to watch both drummers, Pepe. Uh, and, uh, um, well, you know, the, I think the, the cool thing about having these bands on the bill is that although they don't, they don't sound like Clutch, um, they bring a lot of energy to the bill. And um, it's exciting to hear Zach Sabbath play Sabbath songs. You know, that's always fun too. So it's been great. You have to think about music. You know, you can't let the the set get to the point where it's uh, it's just something where you go up there and you just sort of go through the motions. You know, uh, so there are several things that we do to keep it from becoming monotonous. Um, the first and most obvious one is just changing the set list from night to night. Uh, we take turns writing the set list. Uh, tonight is actually my night. Uh, tomorrow would be Neil, and then Tim, and then Dan, and then we'll start all over again. So um, that keeps things fresh. Uh, having a, a new collection of songs to play each night in a different order uh, with a different intention. Maybe there's different uh, segues or different little improvisational bits. Uh, so that helps. Um, also off, off stage, I, I try to practice a lot. I, I think about the drums. I, I try to get my head into a space where uh, I'm absorbing something new, whatever that might be. Um, and although it's, you know, you don't necessarily play an exercise and then go up on stage that night and execute that concept, uh, you're constantly reanalyzing the way you play and the way you think about the drums, um, because this is not this is not a static thing. You know, this this is a this is a fluid thing, an instrument. You 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 uh, put all your time and your energy into it. Your perspective on that instrument changes. You listen to music, you think about it, and then it changes again the next day. So uh, stay on top of that and stay creative, and uh, and drink lots of water. Uh, well, I usually start thinking about the set list right about this time of day, uh, just prior to sound check. And if there is something new that we might want to try, we'll do that at sound check. Um, as far as whether or not we're aware of fan favorites, certainly, you know, there are, there are songs that, uh, that get really good reaction. Uh, there are also songs that we like to play just because we like to play them. Maybe they're a new song or maybe it's an old song that we're sort of bringing back. Um, so that, that definitely figures into the equation. Uh, I, I think about the venue. I think about the other bands that are on the bill. Uh, and then I think about what we played last night and how that went. Um, so there's a lot of different things that go into it. Uh, it's easy to, to make such a, you know, like a, a set list that, that can be really good or it can be not so good. But, you know, that's part of the beauty of, beauty of it. You know, you've got you've got to try these things. Well, it's fun to say beer. You know, uh, and and I I love beer, uh, but water, man, you got to keep yourself hydrated. You know, uh, drinking plenty of water makes you feel better physically, uh, and for me, it just makes me think better. You know, I can I can, uh, I mean, it's easier for me to concentrate on something. Um, stay hydrated, man. Uh, my favorite beer is is local fresh beer. You know, I, I don't uh, discriminate among styles. I'm a, I like to go for an IPA. That's sort of my go-to beer. Uh, but I love sour beers. I love stouts. Um, and whatever the local flavor might be, I'll try that too, you know? Well, I guess there's two parts to that question. You know, I, I, I realized early on that I wanted to play drums. And that, that happened uh, really you know, maybe on the second or third tour that we, we had done. And uh, it was then that I realized this is this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to play drums, you know. Um, now, whether or not that was a guarantee that I wouldn't have to go back and, and, and have a day job, you know, that was that was not part of the equation. You know, I realized I wanted to play drums. Um, but this industry is, is a tough industry. It's a tough game to get into. Um, we are very fortunate to have a fan base um, as dedicated as, as, as they are. And we're well aware of that. And so we do not take that for granted. And, you know, that's one of the reasons we get up there on stage and we play as hard as we do, because we, we know that it can go away at, at any moment. Uh, and at this point, you know, I'm 40 I'm something years old. You know, I've been playing drums all my life. I'm not sure that I could really get a job at a bank or <laughs> at a Home Depot or anything, you know? So this is, this is it, I'm a lifer. 
um, well, I did all kinds of stuff when I was when I was a kid. You know, I was I was pretty industrious. Uh, I would you know cut lawns and uh, uh, till gardens and trim trees and clean gutters. Uh, I got a job at a shoe store at a pretty young age, and I was pretty much managing that shoe shoe store within uh, a couple years. I worked as a welder for a while, um, but I mean, come on, playing drums is the best job you could ever have. Practicing. <laughs> uh, I, I spent a lot of time at home uh, on the drums, thinking about the drums. Uh, I'm right now. I'm in the in the process of soundproofing my basement, so it's not quite so loud for my wife upstairs. Uh, we're working on that. Um, you know, and then you do stuff around the house. You know, you, if, when you're away for four or six weeks at a time, you come home and there's stuff that's got to get done. You know, I got to clean the gutters. I got to. Uh, you know, clean up the garage. I've got to work on a squeaky door, or I gotta, you know, change light bulbs, whatever. You know, all that kind of stuff, regular stuff. You know, and then I try to practice. Uh, personal favorite Clutch album. That's that's a difficult question to answer. Um, you know, right now we're enjoying playing the songs off of Psychic Warfare just because they're the newest songs, and I think in a lot of ways that's uh, probably one of the most complete recordings we've ever done. And by that I mean, uh, I feel like the songs are there, uh, the sound is there, um, the focus of the band is there. Um, but you go back in time and you listen to records maybe, for, you know, speaking for myself, you know, there are records I hadn't listened to maybe in two or three, four years. And you go back and you listen to them and there's, there's, uh, there's things about that record that maybe I didn't realize at the time that were, um, that were sort of uh, they sort of painted the the trajectory, you know. It's it's sort of um, there are songs that are are important that at that time we didn't realize how important they were, uh, and vice versa. You know, there are songs that we thought were really important back then that just didn't really that didn't really stand the test of time. Um, so you know, each each record is unique. It, it marks it marks a time uh, in the band's formation, the t a time in the band's development. Um, and so they're, for me, they're documents. Um, well, I, th I think going up to, leading up to Psychic Warfare, uh, we had a lot of uh, momentum, and that came from Earth Rocker. Um, I think the Earth Rocker release was one that we, we learned a lot about how to release a record. You know, we've been doing this now on our own for several years, and I think we kind of hit on something with Earth Rocker. Um, the record itself was was a, a very good record, but then also uh, the campaign that we put around it uh, was very successful. And you, and you can't underestimate that. That's super important these days. So we took all those lessons that we learned in uh, during the Earth Rocker uh, release and try to apply those and refine those uh, for Psychic Warfare. I think also the, the band has grown considerably. I think we have new fans, younger fans. And that also helps. So it was just kind of, uh, kind of a you know a perfect storm of, of sorts, you know, and and we're very thankful for it. Yeah, for sure. We're we're, we're going to continue doing that. You know, the the vinyl thing is becoming more and more important. Um, I will say, as a label owner, uh, getting the vinyl done on time is very difficult. Uh, and if anybody out there wants to start a business, you know, a vinyl pressing plant that can deliver product on time uh, for the right price would be a, be a good investment. Uh, it's tough out there for, for, for vinyl. Uh, having said that, though, it's more popular than ever. And uh, I enjoy it because it's, it's, it's a physical thing. You know, you can look at it, you can open it up, you can put it on your record player, you can check out the lyrics, and it's, and it's a little bit more of an interactive experience. Uh, which is something that you, you know we don't have so much these days with the Spotify and you know all the other streaming services that are out there. So it's a different kind of listening experience, I think. It, it's really about the live performances. You know, we we get on stage and we we make an honest effort to play as best we can in that in that moment at that time. Uh, and I think the fans have come to expect that from us. 
uh, we take chances sometimes when we play live. Um, you know, maybe in an impro improv improvisational setting, we might we might try some things. <clears throat> Doesn't always work, uh, but that's what makes that show unique for that night. Uh, uh, we, we talk about you know making making that show a real musical experience, and by that I mean a band up there playing their asses off. Uh, no show, you know, no jumping around, no trampolines, no silly makeup, no silly masks to hide behind. Uh, it's just four guys up there making music. And, um, it's, you know, at, at some point I think that resonated with uh, a certain amount of music fans out there. And from there it's just grown. Uh, you know, I'm fine with it. You know, if you want to buy a ticket and spend your day or spend, spend your evening looking at your phone, Okay, whatever. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not there for that. I'm, I'm there to play drums, and if, if you wanna, if you wanna enjoy it in whatever way you wanna enjoy it, it's fine with me. Sure. Yeah. Actually, I did it just the other night. I was watching Joey Castillo play with with Zach Sabbath. You know, he's an amazing player, and uh, I took a little video of him and sent it to my drum buddy, saying, "Hey, man, you gotta check this guy out. You know, he's playing his ass off." Uh, yeah. Sure. I've done that. Well, you know, I actually li used to live in, in Detroit uh, when I was a kid. My, my father worked for the Corps of Engineers. He actually used to run tugboats. Uh, so we spent a, a few years here, and I, and I still have family here. Uh, so Detroit kind of has a, uh, a connection for me, you know, from, from way back when. Um, it was amazing the, the first time that we played at St. Andrew's Hall and that would have been summer of 93. Um, it was amazing having as many people as there were show up at that gig. I think that was a real eye-opener for us. Um, and we've, we seem to have built this relationship with Detroit that um, it, it's unlike any other city here uh, in the States or even in Europe. Um, the shows are, are bigger. Uh, the, the fans are even more amped up. Um, and you know they expect a lot of us, and, and because of that, we we try to play as best we can. You know, uh, Detroit's a great city for rock and roll, and why that is, I'm not really sure. We're gonna we're gonna write some, and and then we're gonna go back on tour. You know, touring really never ends. <laughs> um, we we take breaks from time to time. Um, we'll 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 take off the first three months of uh of next year and we'll we'll get down to writing see what kind of direction that's going to take us in and um and then start making plans to record so probably what will happen is we will do some shows in the spring and then um for us it's really important to play the new songs live so i, I have a feeling that wherever we choose to record we'll do shows on the way out there to uh work through the material play the material you know for me as a drummer those those experiences are crucial to, to recording a record that at the end of the day you feel proud of. Uh, in the live setting, you can immediately tell where the pulse of that tune is, you know. Uh, you, you gauge by the audience reaction how they're latching on to whatever groove that is. And you start to tweak things. You might pull stuff back, or you might push stuff, uh, change up uh, uh, an approach entirely maybe. Um, but that's really crucial. It's 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 uh, it it really brings the song to life. Uh, yeah, I've been jamming with Mark, uh, Yanni, of Stinking Lizavetta, and Chris Brooks, of the band Lion Eyes, and the four of us have been getting together for about a year now. Um, we have we have a good collection of tunes, and I th I think really the next move is to make a, a recording. And so we'll probably do that at some point next year. It's such an eclectic mix of musicians that when we get together, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of fun more than anything, you know. And stuff happens very quickly. So the shape of the music changes and the approach change. Uh, there's a lot of energy there, and, uh, and we're still trying to figure out how to focus it and what it exactly it's going to be. I was lucky enough to see see them play in 1989 and I was a young man um, and I'd seen 
I'd been to shows before. I'd seen other bands that were supposed to be hardcore bands or punk rock bands or metal bands, you know. Um, but these guys took the stage and they they turned this the 930 club and for me it was a, they turned it into a church there was a spiritual electricity that they were able to uh, communicate to the crowd that night that made it bigger than just the music and bigger than than the people that were there it was a collective experience and I think that really came just from the intensity of the band um, these guys were able to tap into to some energy that people hadn't hadn't been able to tap into before you know to call the bad brains a punk rock band I think this it does them a disservice because it's it's bigger than that. Uh, it's it's bigger than hardcore. Um, you know, in my opinion, those guys were easily as important as Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or Cream. Um, and that's what I think about that. Well, I saw Dr. John over the summer back home, and that was pretty great. Um, Ginger Baker, I saw him last year. That was amazing. Uh, Ginger Baker is easily one of my favorite drummers. Uh, I think very important drummer. You know, he he really changed the way people look at rock drums. He was there from the very beginning. You know, he was a jazz drummer, and um, really formed this vocabulary, this rock and roll vocabulary. And so he's he's for me he's super important and still playing great drums. Um, my wife and I go to New Orleans maybe about once a year, twice a year sometimes, and we go down there to see music and hang out, and that's a great city for rock and roll and for music. Um, I, you know, I, I try to get out as much as I can. Um, I saw The Obsessed just recently at the Maryland Doom Festival, seeing Wino play, that was great. Uh, yeah, it's all good stuff, man. Hey, Robert! 